Hello everyone, welcome to Lucky Loads 15 and in this video I'll be giving you my Grand National preview for this year's renewal which takes place this Saturday, one of the most famous horse races in the world, always a big uh, betting contest, everyone in the country always looks to have a bet for this race and in this video hopefully I can try and help you find the winner off this year's renewal. In the video we'll look at some stats and facts of some of the recent winners um, over the last uh, few years. Also as well I'll go through my list of horses who I'll be picking for the race. I'll be going through some of the prominent contenders as well in the betting for this year's race and also as well I'll give you a list of some horses as well you might want to be avoiding that I think you should uh, be looking elsewhere for. So without further ado um, we'll get straight into the stats and facts. If you've uh, never really understood horse race and before I will try to be as um, helpful as I can to explain some of the terminology you might not understand this video is for everyone if you're an expert seasoned professional or you're just a absolute raw um, newbie and you don't know anything about horse racing I will try and um, make it easy to understand so hopefully you can take some of the information in this video away with you if you want to have a bet on the famous race this Saturday so you'll see now on the graphic now, we're going to go through some of the stats and facts uh, between 2009 to 2010, uh, 2018 I should, sorry, the last 10 renewals of the race. And you'll see um, on the graphic there, you'll see all the winners from 2009 to 2018. And you'll see um, on uh, those uh, stats, you'll see the weight, the age, the average rating of the horse, and also as well the SP. When I say the rating, each horse in this country has... Um, uh, uh, what they call a handicap mark and the Grand National is a handicap race which means horses are racing against each other on the ability of their rating so the higher the rating the better the horse but that means in those races the higher rated horses have to give away more weight and you'll see that some of the horses uh, for example uh, Many Clouds has been the um, highest uh, weighted horse to carry um, carry the weight round Aintree in the most recent years. He carried 11 stone 9 on his back which meant that he had to give quite a bit of weight to some of his rivals. You could see that back in 2013 one of the lowest winners in the most recent years was um, Aurora's Encore which won at 10 stone 3. So that horse was receiving a lot of weight from some of its rivals that day and carrying a nice low race and weight can be an advantage. You can see that horses rated um, 10 stone 11 who have carried uh, this uh, weight in the last 10 years has been the average weight of the winner. So that's definitely uh, an interesting fact there. You want to be looking at horses that are going to be carrying less than 11 stone. Also as well you'll be looking at the average rating for the race as well. Um, the average rating is 149 so you're looking at horses probably kind of in the middle of the field um, when it comes to the rating. You do get a few standout horses again Many Clouds was the best rated horse to win in recent years off a mark of 160 but again to Aurora's Encore back in 2013 when this horse won it was rated 137 so there was 23 uh, kind of points as it were um, between the, the worst rated horse and the best rated horse that has um, won the race. But generally, you're looking at horses that are very capable on their day, and that's what the Grand National is really. It's all a bit of luck, and you can see as well, talking about the luck, you can see the average price um, of um, the winner in the last 10 years has been 33 to 1. That means if you put £1 on, you would win £33 if you place that um Horse to win. If you were doing it each way, if you're going to have an each way bet on the race, which I would strongly recommend, that means you're going to be double, doubling your stake. So if you were betting one pound each way, you would actually be betting two pounds because you're actually betting one pound to win, and you're also as well betting one pound to place. And there'll be multiple places being offered by numerous firms on the day, probably six, seven, maybe even eight places um, in some bookmakers. And that means if your horse finished in the first eight and it didn't win, you would get um, normally probably a fifth of those odds so if it was uh, 40 to 1 for example you would get the one pound of your place bet at 8 to 1 meaning that you would win 
eight pounds. So that's kind of how it works. It can be a bit complicated if you don't know anything about horse racing. I'm sorry if um, I'm boring you, if you know all about this kind of thing, but obviously a lot of people watching this video won't know what the Grand National is all about and what horse racing betting is all about as well. So that's just something to take a note there. And also as well, the average age is also a good stat as well. In most recent years, it's probably been um, more of a, the younger horses coming through, horses that are eight to nine, but some of the old campaigners as well, there was uh, three years in a row where 11 year olds won it and also as well 10 year olds I don't think it particularly matters I think each year you get a different bunch of horses and again I think everything will sort itself out but I think that is quite an interesting angle in uh, with younger horses and generally in horse racing you always want to be looking at the newcomers on the block the horses that could improve and the horses that we don't know maybe too much about so that's always an interesting factor when having a bet in racing and I think that can apply slightly towards national which has been shown to good effect in uh, recent years so they're just a few feelings uh that you might want to be having a bet so i'll just go through that again the average um weight of the winner in the last 10 years has been 10 stone 11 the average age has been 10 the average uh rating has been 149 and the average price in the betting has been 33 to 1 so hopefully you can take maybe some of the information away there maybe you didn't know um kind of the records of the horses but i just think it's always a good indicator uh, when looking to have a bet in the race the kind of profile of the winner we then um, are going to now go into the betting uh, for this year's renewal. Now, you'll see on the graphic now, I've not got every horse up on the list. I've just got um, the most uh, prominent ones in the bet, and I've got about the first 10 in the betting or so. So I'll just run through uh, the list there. It's Tiger Row at 4 to 1, Rafinden at 11 to 1, Vintage Clouds at 14 to 1, Annabelle Fly at 14 to 1, Lakeview Lad at 18 to 1, Joe Fry at 20 to 1. Pleasant Company 20 to 1, Maldini 20 to 1, Rock the Casper 20 to 1, and Jury Duty 25 to 1. And the rest of Bar, when I mean Bar, that just means bigger are the rest of these horses. That's what it stands for. So, um, horses it, that you might fancy, um, if they're not on the bet in, in what I've put up, they'll be still in the race, but they're just um, at bigger prices to the ones I've got on the screen. But. Just um, going through uh, some of uh, the market at the moment, what's been quite interesting, Tiger Roll has been extremely well backed for this ever since he won uh, the cross country race at the Cheltenham Festival. We'll talk a bit, a bit more about him in a minute. But he's been so well backed that bookmakers are so scared. And four to one is the best price. He's three to one in places. And I would say if you're having a bet on this year's Grand National, even if you did back Tiger Roll last year and you want to back him again, I wouldn't put you off because he does have solid claims, but if you're having a bet of four to one in a Grand National, where the average price of the winner in the last ten years has been thirty-three to one, that, that that that's not really fun. You want to be having, you want to be having a bit more of a bigger bet at some decent odds at some better prices because. Four to one, that means if you put one pound on it to win, you're going to get four pounds back. Whereas if you did the average, uh, you put one pound on, you get 33 pounds back to win. So it's kind of unappealing. He's a he's a grand horse to watch. He, he really is Tiger O. He's an absolute superstar. But for me, I think he might, he might find it a little bit harder this year. And I think there's a few horses that we'll go through in a minute that can definitely go for, uh, give him a run for his money. And, and, and if you look at some of the other horses... Joe Farrell we'll talk about as well. Uh, he's 20 to 1. He's been a massive gamble on the race, um, but he's yet to still be declared. If you're unaware, um, horses um, have to, uh, some horses have to wait for other horses to come out. That means horses that are currently the top rated between 1 and 40 are eligible to run in the race at the moment, and it would stand like that if all runners stood their ground. But some horses could be withdrawn, and horses that are currently number 41, 42 on the list, 43, they still might have a chance of getting in. Joe Farrell, at the current time of recording, is 42nd on the list. So it could be possible that two horses will come out, but bookmakers have shortened up his odds because it is quite likely he will enter. And... They've got a feeling he probably will go off shorter on the day because lots of people are backing him at juicy prices and that means the bookmakers don't want to give any more money away so they're going to shorten those odds and he's more likely to win. So 
Joe Farrell, he's been one of the gambles of the race. Pleasant Company as well, there's been a bit of money around. Four finished second in the race last year. He's 20 to 1. And also as well, um, horses that I think potentially could go off a little bit shorter. Could be jury duty. And also as well, maybe Annabelle Fly as well. Currently 14 to 1 best price. So, so yeah, so that's, that's just a what the market looks like at the moment and we're just going to go through some of uh, the leading horses now and also as well some of the horses I fancy and I'm going to give you my case and my thoughts and feelings on all of those and um, what I've done before if you've seen some of my videos when I did some Cheltenham previews with another YouTube channel I did a star rating so if I gave them five stars that's what I thought was the most likely winner of the race if you've just seen uh, one star but there's no one stars in here that means that they've got not a hope in hell so about five do we'll talk about Tiger Oil. We've already briefly uh, spoke spoke about what he's done, and you'll see on the screen now that I've given him four stars for the race. And it, to be honest, he does have solid claims, but but history is against him in this race as well. No horse has won um, consecutive Grand Nationals uh, since the 70s, which uh, everyone will know was Red Rum and. And I just think history could be against him here. Also, as well, we, I'm not saying he did have a hard race in 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 um, in the cross country when he won it this year at the Cheltenham Festival, but this year there's not much uh, time for him to probably get over that run at the Cheltenham Festival. There's only been three weeks when normally there's a month, four or five weeks, and and that extra time to recover is normally but very beneficial to horses when they're running at the top of their game. And Tiger Roll might just have that against him. You might remember as well, last year he was getting closed down in the final stages. Uh, Pleasant Company really rallied uh, towards the end of the race and forced actually a photo finish, but Tiger Roll did enough. He's had the same kind of profile this year. He's gone the cross-country route and he's got solid claims still. He's only nine years old. But like we were saying earlier, if you're having a bet in the Grand National 4-1, it's not very appealing price, is it? And I think really you've got to be you've got to be looking elsewhere. Now, the horse that I'm really uh, keen on, probably uh, one of the horses I'm really keen on, is the next horse I'm going to talk about, who's second in the betting, and that's Raph Finden. And you'll see now on the screen, he's trained by Willie Mullins, won this race before uh, with... Um, I can't remember now. The name the name does escape me, but he won it uh, back in uh, 2005 with uh, Hedge Hunter, uh, I believe. So he does know how to how how to win this race, uh, Willie Munns. But he hasn't won it for a while. He is in good form, though. He did win the Cheltenham Gold Cup with Album Photo most recently. And I think Raf Finden is a horse that they've always had in mind for the national. I think he has been laid out for the race. He's a very lightly raced horse for his age. He's 11 years old and he's only had uh, less than 20 career starts, I believe it is. So in the lifetime of a horse, if you don't know much about racing, 20 starts for an 11, less than 20 starts for an 11-year-old means that they probably still could have a little bit of an improvement uh, to come. He was very impressive uh, when he won earlier in the season back in February. I think that uh, that victory might have come at Fairy House. Don't, uh, sorry if I'm wrong on that, but... Yeah, Raf Vinden, he did very well that day to win. And I think that was his prep run for this race. If you actually go back to his form when he won the National Hunt Chase uh, last year at the Cheltenham Festival, that's an incredible piece of form that's worked out really well. He beat a nice horse of Anthony Honeyballs called Miss Poifar, um, who finished second in the Midlands Grand National when last seen. Also as well, you've had the likes of um, Sidon Tennessee, who went on to win the Labrooks Trophy at Newbury last year. He finished, I think, in third place that day. In fourth place as well, you had Impulsive Star that won the Betfred Classic Chase, which won for Arthur one back in 2017 on his way to winning the National. And there were two that they were miles clear and he really did have that stamina at the end which really kicked in and probably just uh, edged him over Miss Poirfoy giving away the weight as well that day. Raf Inden, he's very lightly raced, he goes on most ground. I think the plan has been to keep him, keep him away, to keep his handicap mark at his current rate and in the low 150s. And for me, I think he's got very solid claims and I'm going to give him four stars. Now another horse that's prominent in the betting we you would have seen in that list is Vintage Clouds for Sue Smith. Now this horse is 14 to 1 of the makers at the moment, but to me there's quite a few horses in here that have got a very similar um similar profile to Vintage Clouds. A good solid handicapper, finished second in the ultimate handicap chase last time we saw him at the Cheltenham Festival. But I just think that this horse he's a 
he's a horse that can be quite frustrating at times. He, he's a solid yardstick, but he can now and again put a few blanks together. He did so in the Welsh Grand National, where it probably didn't suit him that day, to be honest with you. He does probably want better ground, which he is going to get um, here. He is a previous course winner as well, and Connections have won this race in recent years. That's Trevor Hemmings with the likes of Bala Briggs. And also as well, um, many clouds. So they do like to target this race connections. Also as well, Sue Smith won with Aurora's on course. So she's no, she knows what she's doing. But again, I just wonder, maybe some hard races this season might just tell against Vintage Clouds. And I think as well, he, he likes to go well fresh. She is a previous course winner, mind you, saying that at Aintree. But I'm just, I'm just not convinced maybe... Um, Maybe he, he's going to be over that run in the Ultima last time. That's why I kind of want to take him on. I, I think the horse can win. But again, it's the Grand National. And for me, I want to be back in something maybe a bit more unexposed. And uh, a bit of a bigger price. The next horse we're going to get onto now is Joe Farrell for Rebecca Curtis. And we already spoke about this one. Still needing two horses at the turn current time recording to be uh, balloted out of, um, of the National uh, because we've already got the full 40 horses at the moment. Now Joe Farrell has been attracting a lot of money. He won the Scottish Grand National uh, last year. You might remember I actually tipped him up at 33 to 1 in my big race preview. One of the biggest tips I've ever given out and I was absolutely over the moon that day. Won a lot of money on Joe Farrell. Um, I remember, I, I do remember that day, and I've always wanted to back him next time and see what he was doing. He's run in a couple of um, races at Newbury uh, this year in preparation for this. Finished second, which was definitely the best of them um, last time out at Newbury, where he ran a very strong race. I think he is potentially still well handicapped. He's running off a mark of 142 in this race. He's going to be carrying a nice low racing weight. We know he stays a trip. He can go on any ground, but I do think he does want it probably a little bit uh, uh, better. So good ground, I think, could be ideal for him. And like a lot of these um, horses, I still think that he might have a little bit more to give at the highest level. Rebecca Curtis has been very bullish in her comments about him. He's definitely been the subject to a gamble. I think he could definitely go off a lot shorter. I think he could definitely go off maybe something like 10, 12 to 1 on the day. And I think there'll be market strength as we get closer to the race with him. Now, the horse that you're going to see now that's probably just about my number one selection um, is Jury Duty that you'll see on the screen now. I've given him five stars for the race. Trained by Gordon Elliott, who's obviously won this race with Tiger O, and also as well Silver Birch, which I believe was back in 2007, 2008, that kind of time. He has won the race before Gordon Elliott. Um, like I said, he knows how to do the job. This horse has got a very similar um, campaign um, to Raffind and lightly raced. Well, actually won the, the version of the American Grand National back in uh, October, I believe. Um, and then was put away. We saw him recently when he won at uh, Dan Royal. Quite nice style that day. And I think that was definitely a good prep run for this. Robbie Powers, but for the ride as well. Who's won the Grand National um, before. Also as well, um, Robbie Power did win on him when he was over in America. So he knows how the horse goes. He goes any way around this horse. And he doesn't mind pretty much what the ground is. I think he's definitely a solid contender in the race. He fits the profile as well. He's eight years old. He's still young. Could have a bit more to give. He's nicely well treated in the weight. He's got kind of the average rate, uh, weight. And I just think a lot of people could latch on to him near the time during duty. And he could easily go off something maybe like 16, 12 to 1, maybe even shorter than 10 to 1. I really think that ju ju jury duty will be found in the market. And if he can get 25 to 1, I think there's a crack in each way bet. I think he will really well go close. And I think he is one of the more likely winners of the race. And that's why I'm going to give him five stars. He's probably my strongest fancy just at this current stage. Now, I've talked about some of um, some of the, the leading horses and what I think of them. Now, I could have talked about all 40 horses that are lining up, to be honest with you, and that, that would probably be a very boring video. Um, but 
Oh, I've had enough of talking some of the ones about the front of the market. In the Grand National, if you're having a bet, you've always got to have one on an outsider. And the outsider that I've kind of uh, come up with here is T for two. Now, I'm on him at 66 to one, and I think that's actually quite a big price. And I could easily see him going off at maybe something like 33 to one. He's trained by Jane Williams. Lizzie Kelly is booked for the ride. Now, this horse is probably one of the more classier types in the race has competed in King George, Cheltenham Gold Cups. Also has won, well won the Aintree Bell back here in 2017, which I remember was one of the first big winners I ever had here on my YouTube channel. Uh, when a lot of people said he couldn't win, but he did very well that day. And ever since then, really, he's kind of been a, a bit out of form and, and probably finding life just a little bit too tough in those graded races. Then... One of the plans um, for some of the spring festivals was to run him in the cross-country race at the Cheltenham Festival. And the yard were very bullish about his chances. They said he liked the fences. And he was actually running a very good race in the cross-country um, at Cheltenham. When he fell, he was just making his move um, to get a main, um, among the main group. And he was going towards the leaders, travelling very well. He appeared to be liking it. Lizzie Kelly said afterwards that he was in the process of running a good race. Not sure if he would have beaten Tiger Rowe. But nonetheless, I think off a mark now of a, in a handicap of a mark of 149, this mark could be very lenient to him. He's going to be carrying a nice low racing weight. He's the average age. He's got the average mark. Lizzie Kelly as well could become the first woman uh, to win the Grand National, which would be an amazing achievement. And also as well would definitely cement her place in her, in history. And also as well just continue the good news of female jump jockeys at the moment. Obviously, Bryony Frost, Lizzie Kelly, did be, to be fair, did win. At uh, the Cheltenham Festival with Sarah Delac, also as well, Katie Welsh, Bridget Andrews, Nina Carberry in recent years, all, all, all riders that are going, going places. I've obviously got a soft spot for a female, the story of female jockeys. I'm still doing a project on it. Also as well, I made a massive film about it for my university work. Unfortunately, I can't show it uh, because um, of uh, copyright reasons. It was only shown for educational purposes so unfortunately i can't show you that film but hopefully one day i uh, i will maybe make a, a better film with maybe it, who knows maybe bbc sky they're interested in the story i can maybe work on something something about it but um yeah i would love to see lizzie kelly win it i think this horse has got as good a chance as any at those at bigger prices and i thought 66 to 1 with multiple places if he does finish the race He's got a good chance of, of being close, I thought. He's a classy animal, and he's got a lot going for him, I think. If he can just maybe just brush up on his jumping, that's the only question mark. Sometimes he is prone to make a mistake or two. If he's travelling well in the race, and he can get round, and Lizzie can give him a good, intelligent ride, this horse has got to go close, and that's why I'm going to give him four stars, and he's probably my outsider for the race. So that's my uh, tip there. Um, what I think of him. Now, horses to avoid, I did say I'll give you a list. Now, my horses to avoid are Mit Manello Rocco, which some of the shrewd pundits will be going on about his piece of form that he, he had when he um, won the National Hunt Chase a couple of years ago when he beat Native River and also as well as second in the Cheltenham Gold Cup behind uh, Size and John. Apart from that, He's got nothing to offer really in, in his recent runs. He's been a very disappointing horse. He's a ho he's a talking horse that money always comes for. And he always falls or gets pulled up very early on. I really can't back this Manello Rocco. And if, if you're reading some shrewd pundit that's saying, Oh, Manello Rocco is the one, don't back it. Really don't back it because... He, if he, if I'll hold my hands up if he comes up and wins, but if you if you look at his form, he's got nothing to go on, and I don't want to be back in horses that have got loads of fools or pulled up next to their names. It's very unappealing for me, and just because just because people are going on some classy runs a few years ago, that doesn't necessarily mean he's in the same kind of form as he was then. So for me, I would be against him. Now, another horse that could be on this list, that I have put on this list actually, is uh, Voltor, who was a nice uh, winner at Ascot, but got raised 14 pounders, now rated 160. Nicky Henderson, even though he has said he has school well at home, is definitely gutted that he got raised for that. This was always a target for him, Voltor. Uh, and I just think even the race he won at Ascot hasn't worked out that well. And... Even though he is trained by Nicky Henderson, who is a genius, he's never won this race. 
And for me, you've got to be avoiding him. So he's on my list. And the other horse, um, even though obviously he might be popular in the market, there will be probably money for him on the day. One for Arthur. He hasn't shown sod all this season. I know I'm not being harsh on him. He just had an injury um, which kept him out of action. And ever since then, he's had a lot of chance. He's had a few chances now to show, show his class. But it just hasn't worked out for him. He's fallen. He's been pulled up. He's had too many excuses for me. And even though Lucinda Russell will say he's in good order and, and all that, you don't you don't want to be backing him with a load of um, negatives next to his name in recent runs. And also as well, we've already spoken about history is against horses normally having repeat wins in the race. So they're my uh, three horses to avoid. We'll now go for my final selections for the race. I always give four for the race. I think it's always worth having a few bets because obviously if if you just back one horse and you go, oh, I was going to do the other horse that you had in mind that goes and wins, then you're at least covered. And with the multiple places back in each way, you're at least going to get one or two that hopefully will finish in the frame. And my top four for the race, as you can see on the screen now, um, is Rafinden, Jury Duty, Joe Farrell and Tifa Two. And hopefully some of those can run some good races and make it into the money places. And hopefully, you never know, maybe we have found the winner. It's always hard picking the winner of the Grand National. We all want to do it. But I think as long as you get a run for your money, you can never complain because it's a complete lottery. And probably most of the things I've told you can be thrown out the window. But th this has just been a guide really to help, hopefully try and help you find um, the winner of uh, the race this year. And just a few things to think in mind if you're a newbie um, having a bet in this race for the first time of maybe what kind of things you want to be looking at in the Grand National. So they're my thoughts and feelings on this year's renewal of the 2019 Grand National. If you enjoyed the video, please like it for more uh, YouTube videos here on my YouTube channel at Lucky Loads 15. You can also follow me on Twitter as well. I'm at Lucky Loads 15. And that's all I've got to say. So please gamble responsibly. Hopefully I've found you the winner for the race. And we'll be seeing you soon.